Look at this, guys. Look at this speed. Unreal. Throttle only. I haven't pedaled at all. <laughs> this is crazy. Watch this acceleration. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Thirty. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ladies and gentlemen, fans and haters, and trolls in the comments, welcome back to the channel. I love all of you guys. Huh? Thank you for letting me go. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're out here on the the myth, the legend, the precision guided missile. The wired cruiser, dual motor, rear motor, 50 amps, 3000 watts, front motor, 40 amps, 2400 watts. Unbelievable hill climbing abilities. Top speed, so far we've gotten to 41 miles an hour. Although it is 10 degrees warmer today than it was when I did the last top speed run. Let's go ahead and turn on our Savior heated gloves. There we go. So it's like, uh, I don't know, 38 degrees right now, something like that. And uh, it's sunny, thankfully. It is going to be warming up this week. Thank God. And so with those better temperatures, usually batteries run better. Usually the voltage is a tiny bit lower when it's cold weather. So you don't get as much power. And uh, we are pretty much maxing out the RPM of these motors. So in theory, we might get a little bit more top speed, maybe by like, I don't know, one mile an hour. I'm gonna hope for 42 miles an hour throttle only. We'll see if we can get that. Maybe during the summer, we'll obviously have to wait for those temperatures. We'll find out, guys. Couple quick updates on this bike. I did finally fix the brakes. When I was testing it, I really wanted to get this thing out in the road and test it out. I was very anxious to do so. And when I was testing it, it pretty much had no brakes. It had the worst brakes ever. And uh, yeah, it was not safe at all to use this bike. But I did it anyways for you guys and for myself. I wanted to see what this, what the performance was like. So we fixed that and I'm going to pull over over here. Give you guys another uh, peek at what we've done. Why don't we uh, move away from the police officer? I don't know if you guys saw him or her standing over there. Just in case, I don't want them to be like, hey, what is that? How many watts is it? Is it 750 or is it 751 watts? Are you over the legal limit? If so, you're getting deported. I don't know. I just don't want to deal with the cops at all. But we're gonna pull over somewhere. All right, so we'll stop right here. All right, so let's start at the top. Uh, I put the uh, my nice Micha mirror over here. I really like that mirror. A couple things I've changed since the last time you guys have seen this video. Number one, I've covered the speedometer of the display for the first motor because I don't need to see it. I don't need to see two speedometers. I either have GPS speed or the speed of the rear motor right here. I don't need two numbers. But I did uncover the power level, or the pedal assist level, I should say, and the voltage. And the pedal assist, it doesn't really do anything, but I just want to see that number. I might change it in the settings later to do something, meaning, let's say I do want less power from the front motor overall. I could, I think, reduce it in the settings, or at least I could set it so it's a soft start. If I can't adjust the power of the, uh, the front motor based on the uh, throttle, I might cover this up also and just watch the voltage. Uh, let's see, I put my repair kit on here. We still got the bear spray. We got a nice drink container over here. This is a really good drink container, extremely uh, durable. And uh, let's keep looking, show you guys the front. Official license plate. And this is a, uh, a little pack that I put on here for wallet keys, small storage. Of course, you got our horn over here. So the cockpit, I guess you could say has been cleaned up a tiny bit and I put a lot of stuff on the front because I want there to be as much weight as possible not as much weight as possible but a good amount of weight on the front wheel yes that does give for a heavier steering feel like turning this bike 
it's like the SUV of e-bikes. And so, yeah, that's not ideal, but it is what it is, guys. That's going to be one of the things we'll talk about on today's ride is just because you can, should you build a dual motor e-bike? And we're going to talk about all the pros and cons. Besides that, everything else is pretty much the same, exactly what you guys saw. I know some of you guys in some other comments, I've seen that uh, you guys are saying this thing looks like a Frankenstein bike. There's a wiry mess everywhere. I know some of you guys are saying, oh, this looks like a wiry mess. It looks crazy. And you're right. This is all uncovered, but that is by design because I'm still testing this. I'm going to be doing some thermal testing on the controllers and the back motor later. Honestly, I think it's going to be fine. Uh, but ye of little faith, don't you worry, my friend. We're going to have this all covered up with ABS plastic, and this thing is going to look mint. It's going to look sharp, fully assembled, all put together. And it's going to look great. And these both, and both of these batteries, remember, are both removable. So if I need to make this a lot lighter for a car rack, I can easily do it. So don't you worry, my friends. This thing is going to be clean looking, all covered up, nice ABS plastic. But for the most part, this bike is done, except for that part. So this is really what it's going to look like. Watch, watch this acceleration. Watch this acceleration. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Thirty. Whoa, 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 whoa. See that? Almost didn't stop. Oh my goodness. Let's do that again. Still working on bending these brakes, guys. So the back wheel is slipping a bit. I might honestly have to upgrade the front brake caliper to a quad piston. So it is what it is. Let's do a couple more runs. You guys can time. We'll time it in the video what the zero to 30 time is. We'll watch the speedometer because we know this is accurate for the most part. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Thirty. Yeah, that front brake needs some work. All right, so let's continue on our journey, on our test ride. And I am curious to see what these speedometers do throughout today's ride. If you guys remember, both of them started having issues on me towards the end of my ride. And I don't know if it's because of the cold or if it's something else. So we're just going to continue on. and see what happens. There's a good opportunity to bed the brakes. Man, it is windy. All right, so now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about dual motor e-bikes. First, let's talk about what are the biggest advantages of having dual motors. The first main advantage of having two motors versus one motor is traction. If you're trying to get up, uh, let's say, a slightly muddy hill with low traction, two wheels driving you forward is far superior than one wheel because both wheels will be pulling you up versus one just pushing you, right? So traction is going to be a huge advantage. The second advantage to adding a second motor, adding a front motor to your e-bike that already has that rear motor, is going to be the ability to get way more power from a bike with an existing bike. Think of it like this. What's cheaper to do, to add a motor to your nice mountain bike or to just buy an entirely new electric mountain bike. It's a lot cheaper just to add a motor to your already nice mountain bike. Look at this guys, look at this speed. Unreal. Throttle only, I haven't pedaled at all. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh my God. So there's a cost benefit. And in my opinion, those are the only two reasons why you should add a front motor to your bike. Now, let's talk about all the downsides. 
So I've ridden uh, a bunch of dual motor bikes now. Some, believe it or not, heavier than this. And if I were to do it all over again, if I were to make the best decision, for me personally, I don't go out in the woods really. I don't use this bike off-roading a lot. I don't use it for hunting. I don't need the traction. In fact, I have pretty much slick tires on this thing. I would just buy a single powerful rear motor and build a bike myself. I would get a QS205, 72 volts, throw 100 amps in there, like my buddy uh, Jason did with his Wired Freedom. That's what I would do off the rip. Because when you add a second motor to a bike, you'll then obviously need to add the weight of the second motor, potentially uh, front dropouts. That's what I did just to be on the safe side. Because this thing is pulling 2400 watts, 40 amps. You'll also need a second battery, however you combine it for the most part, because uh, if you want to use both motors at the same time, you know, you'll overdraw from the first battery and um, usually your BMS or, f or discharge fuse will protect the battery. But regardless, you won't be able to use one battery. You'll need a second battery. And then, of course, you'll need a second controller. And a bunch of wiring on top of that, a second wiring harness, a second display. You guys see where I'm going with this? That's going to make a bike really heavy. Very, very heavy. This bike weighs 115 pounds with everything you've seen on it. 115 pounds. And yeah, it does have a good amount of stuff on it. And yeah, it does have a good amount of items on it, a lot of accessories, just the way I like it. But it's gonna make a very, 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 very heavy, very heavy bike. A lot heavier than if you just had one, let's say slightly larger motor, the QS205. Yeah, it is heavier and larger than a geared hub motor like the Hentac, but not by much. But it can handle a lot more power. And if you throw in a ton of amps into it, It'll handle it and it will have even more torque than a powerful geared hub motor. It'll have more. Again, my buddy uh, Jason, he put together a, uh, a QS205 motor with a Sabaton controller, 100 amp. My buddy Kevin from Northeast Battery System built him a battery, high discharge, so he can easily discharge 100 amps from it. In fact, he can go way higher than that if he wants to. And he can do wheelies at 20 miles an hour. That is some serious torque, guys. That's, it's crazy. And he only needs one big battery. In that one battery, you only have one BMS. So you don't need two BMSs. So I guarantee you, his bike now with the 100 amp controller is just as fast as this one. It's, it's actually faster at the top end. For acceleration, it's probably just as fast. And it's gonna be lighter than this one. And his steering is going to feel a lot better because he doesn't have all that weight in the front. This thing is, uh, it feels like a huge SUV now. It's like the SUV of e-bikes. If I wanted to go hunting with this thing through low traction environments, if I threw some big tires on it, it would be incredible. But I don't do that. If I'm just doing this, that one big rear hub motor is going to be much, much, much better. And now let's talk about practicality. So I've ridden this single motor wired cruiser for quite some time. No issues at all. And I loved it. I went everywhere with this thing. It was a great bike. It still is a great bike. But now that it's this heavy, now that it's freakish. Oh, let's see how high I can get the speedometer. Let's see what's it, what. Here we go. 41, that's what it says, all right. Now that this thing is freakishly heavy, it is very, very hard to maneuver around corners, tight corners. It's huge. It's like driving a huge truck. It's like going from a normal size, let's say, Toyota Tacoma, like a normal size truck, to a giant flatbed. 
and you don't need that flatbed, but now you're stuck driving it. And everything you used that little truck for that did just fine, now you have to use the giant flatbed. You just don't need it. I don't need all this power. I got by without it just fine before. And honestly, if I were to do it all over again, knowing what I know now, I wouldn't have built this bike. I would not have made it. The reason I made it is because it's fun. It's fun as hell. I wanted to learn a lot. I wanted to see how far I can push this bike. I was curious. But if I were to do it all over again, I would buy a frame from Alibaba. I would get a QS205 motor. I would have my buddy Kevin from NortheastBatterySystems.com build me a high discharge battery. I would get a far driver controller so I can get some field weakening in there. I can adjust how many amps goes to the motor, highly adjustable, and they are very reliable controllers. I'd get the best frame for all of that and I would just build my own high-powered e-bike. It would be not only faster than this, probably have more torque than this, but it would also be lighter. It would be simpler. It'd probably cost the same because those parts are expensive, but if I'm going to pay the same amount, I might as well get a better product. And something else that you won't have to worry about is this. See that front wheel slipping? You would not have to worry about that. And that's actually potentially dangerous if you're not careful. If you're turning and that front wheel goes out, you're down. So a rear motor, keeping all that power on the back wheel that has the most traction is better, much better, much safer. And if you look at gas powered motorcycles, believe it or not, there are dual motor, or I should say dual drive, gas-powered motorcycles. This is not something that is unique to electric bikes or electric motorcycles. And almost always, people have realized the biggest advantage of these dual drive bikes is increased traction. And all of them are for off-road purposes only. They are made for heavy, serious off-roading. Because that traction is so helpful getting through something that's slick mud snow whatever it might be sand something like that if you want to build something like this god bless you go for it it's fun as hell but i'm saying in hindsight if you don't even have a bike yet and you're thinking about buying something like this and then modding it adding a front motor to it don't do it just buy a single rear motor that's hugely powerful trust me you're going to be much happier and you'll go way faster and you'll accelerate faster as well. If you already have something like this, then yeah, it might be, if you really want to add that front motor, go for it. Uh, I'm not gonna say it's easy, because the, the way I did it, I did it very, very safely and securely. I have two giant torque arms up front. That wheel isn't going anywhere. Everyone online was telling me I was gonna rip apart my forks, no matter what. So far, so good. Ladies and gentlemen, we are successful. Watch me break the forks right now, as I say it. So you guys saw the acceleration of this bike with just dual motors. Let's see what I can do with pedaling also. So we'll be in gear three, throttle, pedaling also. Here we go, three, two, one, go. 30. Wow. Let's do that again. I'm gonna throw all these numbers up later on. I'll compile it. Some people like to do throttle only test. I like to do that because everyone has different leg power. But just in case, let's say you wanna see how fast you can go, how fast you can accelerate with pedaling also. We're gonna do all the tests. Three, two, one, go. That's fast. We're gonna do a zero to 40 test also while pedaling hard right after we cross this road. Let's start, let's actually keep it on gear three. 
and we'll shift up as we're going. This is also keeping me warm because it is still cold. I do have heated gloves, but those are just barely working enough for my fingers not to freeze. My fingers are still cold. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, zero to 40 miles an hour, pedaling dual motors. Three, two, one, go. Look at that guys that's pretty fast we're gonna do a little bit off-roading today so I told you guys that we are testing this bike I'm not just gonna build it to 100% and then have something break and then I gotta tear it all apart I also want to show you guys this bike in stages as I build it in case you're crazy enough to do the same thing you guys can learn through my potential mistakes. If something breaks, you'll know what to watch out for. All right, I think the brakes are working a little bit better now, now that they've been bedded in. And check this out, guys. I like my cockpit full of accessories. I love my accessories. Got my bell, got my horn, bear spray, got everything. And nice little handy dandy drink holder. Look at that, guys, a warm beverage. A little bit of decaf coffee in here. Oh! That I just spilled everywhere because I filled it up too much. Let's just drink this later. All right, we're gonna do a little bit of off-roading right over here. These aren't the best tires for this, but we'll be all right. We got dual motors. I do feel the brakes working better now. They feel like they are stopping me more. I think they had a chance to bed into the discs. I did switch out the front brake pads. Yeah, so these brakes, they had to be bled. I don't know what happened. Both of them needed to be bled. And so I did that and now they work fine. I know I did say that we would off-road and technically this is off-roading, but this is such a flat area that Pretty much doesn't even count. I don't really use the front motor all that much. Like right now, obviously it's all a rear motor. We're just cruising, just hanging out. And I don't even want to use it in this area because it would just slip. All right, guys, we're gonna chill over here and enjoy our warm beverage. See you guys in a bit. All right, guys. Let's continue. Got my selfie camera on. Turn the knees on. Boom, front motor. Back motor. All right. And we're off. Just chilled and drank a little bit of decaf in front of this beautiful river over here. Nice, warmer, sunny winter day it is thank god going to be getting warmer soon let's keep going see how there's people here let's keep it at pedal assist one we'll just chill lowest gear not even using the front motor hello yeah see these situations right here i am not even using the front motor nor do i need to this feels like a giant hummer going through the woods not a sporty, nimble, high-powered bike. This is like a tank. Man, that is a loud helicopter. Sounds like a military helicopter. I don't know if you guys can hear it. We are getting through this area just fine with this dual motor bike. Not even touching the front motor. This might as well be a stock wired cruiser. I know some of you guys watching this video are thinking to yourselves, uh, hey, why don't you get Get on the review of the uh, the GOAT bike, the GOAT Power Bikes Motor GOAT. And uh, I am working on it, guys, trust me. But uh, I just wanted to get out here and stretch my legs and take a break. I've been doing a ton of video editing and recording. I'm actually working on, let's see, one, I just finished one, two, three, so four e-bike reviews in a span of like four weeks. 
while trying to coordinate with the weather. Sometimes the weather doesn't cooperate and a full-time job in a social life. So we're getting there, folks. We'll get there. So for now, I just need a little bit of a, a therapeutic ride. Just something to clear the mind, you know what I'm saying? Stop working for once. We'll get there though, don't worry. I try and do, I try and spend a lot of time on my video reviews, especially now. I want to do a good job on them, so good music, good editing. I don't want to just throw something out there because once it's out there, I can't take it back. If it's low quality, people are going to see that and not really like it. Yeah, I can get a video out fast to you guys, but it's going to suck. So I'd rather spend a little bit more time on it, make it really nice, so you guys can enjoy it and I can be proud of my work. We are cruising, guys, ladies and gentlemen. We are just chilling. Not even using the front motor. Back motor is plenty for stuff like this. See, I'm telling you, you guys don't need a front motor. You really don't need it. That back motor on this bike is plenty powerful. Even with the stock 40 amps, plenty powerful. My best advice to you guys is just get out there and ride your bike. Enjoy it. Enjoy your bike. I mean, obviously, if you like to tinker, it is what it is. But if you feel like you're missing out in some way, shape, or form by not having a front motor, trust me, you're not. You are not, I assure you. So much mud. Get out there and enjoy your bike. Preferably with friends. Unless you don't want to be with your friends, that's fine. I understand solo rides are nice sometimes. Not a lot of friends have e-bikes nowadays. That will change in the coming years, but right now, if you're on an e-bike, you're kind of just way faster than every other bicyclist out there. So it's either you're just crawling with them or they're trying to keep up with you, and it's not fun either of those ways. Man, this thing has pull. Jesus, that was dual motors. I've done this loop many times with a single motor and it's plenty. You know, I will say I really do enjoy having an e-bike that still resembles a normal bicycle. One of the reasons you get this type of bike is because you want it to look like a normal bike. You know, it's got pedals, functional pedals with functional gearing, normal bicycle geometry. The only thing that makes it look like something super powered, really, are the huge tires. Besides that, pretty much a normal bike. Got some sand in here. Yeah, that front motor is just slipping at this point. And so I'm riding by these people at level one pedal assist, just using my rear motor. And I'm using my low gear pedaling. And nobody thinks anything. Nobody thinks anything of it. I'm just minding my own business, enjoying my bike. And they're just walking. See, if I was on a Suron, that would be totally different because that thing looks like a motorcycle. If I was on a moped style e-bike, that looks like a motorcycle. So that is really nice that you can buy these types of bikes and make them high powered and uh, kind of blend in if you want to. And if you don't want to, You can open her up on the road or wherever you want and go 40 plus miles an hour. This is the type of testing I like to do with mods that I make. I take it off road, I bang the bike around a bit, put some miles on it. I wanna see if it's reliable. The first shunt mod I did, which was way too much power for the motor it, uh, it broke the motor, it overheated. There was one wire that disconnected. I don't know if the solder joint was weak to begin with. One of the, uh, the hall sensor wires came loose. I'll probably solder that back on and see if it helps, see if it fixes the problem. But you could tell the windings took a beating, man. They were dark. But at 50 amps, that rear motor is holding up just fine. When I was doing this shunt mod, I talked with the, uh, the uh, owner of Wired, Steve. I'm sure all you guys know Steve. 
and I asked them how much motor, how much power in theory could this motor really handle reliably? And he told me just over 3000 watts. And seems to be pretty accurate so far. I'm not pushing it really hard. I don't really push this bike all that much because I don't want to, nor do I need to. I don't have a desire to. Uh, maybe I could break it, but right now at 50 amps, it's running just fine. With electric motors that are ran at higher specs than they're designed for, it's not a matter of um, if it'll break, it's a matter of when, just like with anything, honestly. So this thing might break in, I don't know, six months of riding it, or it might break in six years of riding it. Who knows? When you run more power through it, it definitely increases the chances of it overheating, especially stripping those gears, although they are metal reinforced. That's gonna be tough. So as you guys can see, we're doing just fine. Everything is working great. Although I'm not even using the rear motor. I do feel that uh, the weight of the front motor in the front shock, the suspension does feel extra clunky because now the wheel has so much weight, it can't keep up with the, uh, the bumps. A bump might push the suspension in and it compresses it, but it has so much weight now that it doesn't decompress fast enough. Man, this is a muddy mess. Oh my God. Ugh. Let's go through here. Yeah, dual motor, powered through. I gotta put the uh, the front fender on this bike because I'm so sick of this bike just getting so disgustingly dirty. After any little ride like this, you run through one muddy patch, that's it. Your bike's a mess. I felt some, uh, some mud splatter on my face. I had my visor open a little bit and through the small little opening of my visor, I felt some mud on my face. So we'll get that front fender on there. Bikes look in my opinion, this is all subjective. I like the look of bikes without fenders, but man, I really hate cleaning my bike. And by cleaning, you gotta get every little nook and cranny where all the mud is flung up. So I keep my bike indoors, actually in my living room. I don't wanna bring in a muddy mess. And so the pain of cleaning my bike is greater than the pleasure I get from seeing a bike without any fenders or rack, even though it looks cooler, in my opinion. I did add the rear rack onto this bike because uh, this is going to be kind of my like long distance hauler. If I do take a long distance trip, I can throw a bag on the rear rack. Another advantage to the cruiser dual battery setup, having the battery in the center so that I have the rear rack available for storage, lots of it. Anyway, this is gonna be my long distance hauler. So I want that rear rack so I can throw a, a bag on there with my bike lock and whatever else I need, I can go long distance with this thing. 45 amp hours of battery. So now what I wanna do is I've been riding around for a while. The speedometer has been fine. If you guys remember last time when it was like in the twenties and this thing started to get all wonky, the front started to get wonky too. We're going to take off this little Velcro thing that I made and see if this speedometer is wonky as well because I suspect that the cold was interfering, but I don't know if it's my wiring because everything works great. The, thro the throttle works great. Everything works great. Yeah, so... So, okay, so what's interesting is right now it's set to 49. If I use a little bit of throttle, if I use the throttle, check this out. If I throttle, if I'm actually powering through on the bike, the speedometer will work. See that? I'm just using front motor right now. I don't want to use too much. See that? It works now. But if I let go... It gets all wonky. It doesn't matter. It's going to be covered anyways, and I don't really care. Everything still works perfectly anyway, but I don't know why it's doing that. I might just mess with the settings a little bit more and call it a day. Let's put that cover back on. 
I will have to make a better cover for this later. I kind of just threw this on just for now, just to see how it works. All right, we're off. Well, let's go. Dual motor. Jesus Christ. So much power. It's <laughs> it's hard to get used to how much, how fast this thing is. You will eventually. You get used to everything eventually. But right now, man, I'm reviewing like normal powered bikes. Even uh, the GOAT power bike. Even that's a pretty fast bike. You would compare to 5,400 watts of dual motor geared hub drive power ah, you're gonna have to you're gonna need like a Suron to compete with this this type of acceleration gotta tighten this mirror down dual motor baby let's go and my pedals still work the 60 tooth chain ring I can pedal at 40 miles an hour Man, so much wheel spin. Crazy. So that's it for today, folks. We're gonna head on back. I'll let you guys know the final mileage of this ride and where the battery voltage is after having them rest for a little bit and warming back up. Please subscribe to the channel if I have earned your subscription and also check out my social media accounts. I am on TikTok and Instagram, Facebook, add me there. Follow me at my Facebook group, eBike Addicts. We have a lot of fun over there. I'm trying to bring all of those numbers up. They are currently rookie numbers, so we're trying to bring those follower numbers up. Looks like the voltage after the trip is about 59 volts. We got 58.6 on one. 59 on the other Leave a like on the video if you like this video and if you don't tell me why in the comments tell me why you're mad tell me why you are angry Tell me what childhood trauma led you to leave angry comments on a social media website Let me know your life problems That's it for today folks until next time